Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. So in this video, we will discuss the UK driving theory test. If you don't already know, in the UK driving theory test, you have 57 minutes to answer 50 questions in total and you have to get at least 43 of them correct in order to pass. All of these questions have multiple options and you have to choose the correct one. So in today's video, we will discuss a mock test just like the real one. You will have 57 minutes to answer 50 questions and you have to get at least 43 of them correct in order to pass. I will give you 3 seconds to guess the correct answer for each question and then I will reveal the answer. Taking mock tests is a great way to practice your skills and to improve before we give you real test. With that being said, let's start with our first question. That is, you've just gone through flood water. What should you do to make sure your brakes are working properly? Options are accelerate and keep to a high speed for a short time. Go slowly while gently applying the brakes. Avoid using the brakes at all for a few miles or stop for at least an hour to allow them time to dry. So the correct option is the second one. In this case, you should go slowly while gently applying the brakes to make sure that they are working properly. That's what's if on a vehicle, where would you find a catalytic converter? Options are in the fuel tank, in the air filter, on the cooling system or on the exhaust system. So the correct option is the last one. You would find it on the exhaust system. Nasa says, why is traveling in neutral for long distances, known as coasting, bad driving technique? Options are, it will cause the car to skid, it will make the engine stall, the engine will run faster, or there won't be any engine braking. So the correct option is the last one. You won't have any engine braking and you also have less control over your steering. That is why it is a bad technique. Next question is, other drivers may sometimes flash their headlights at you. What's the official meaning of this signal? Options are, there's a radar speed trap ahead, they're giving way to you, they're warning you of their presence, or there's a fault with your vehicle. So the correct option is the third one, they're warning you of their presence. Next question is, at an incident, how could you help a casualty who has stopped breathing? Options are, keep their head tilted forward as far as possible, follow the DRABC code, raise their legs to help with circulation, or try to give them something to drink. So the correct option is the second one. You should follow the DRABC code. As I said, is what action should you take when you see flashing amber lights under a school warning sign? Options are reduce speed until you are clear of the area, keep up your speed and sound the horn, wait at the lights until they stop flashing, or increase your speed to clear the area quickly. So the correct option is the first one. You should reduce your speed until you are clear of the area. As I said, is what's most likely to waste fuel? Options are reducing your speed driving on motorways, using different brands of fuel, or under inflated tires. So the correct option is the last one, under inflated tires. Next question is, you are waiting to emerge at a junction. Your view is restricted by parked vehicles. What can help you to see traffic on the road you are joining? Options are looking for traffic behind you, reflections of traffic in windows, making eye contact with other road users, or checking for traffic in your interior mirror. So the correct option is the second one. The reflections of traffic in windows can help. Next question is, which type of sign tells you what you must not do? So the correct option is the first one. Any sign with the red circular border will tell you what you should not do. Next question is, when should you use your vehicle's horn? Options are to alert others to your presence, to allow you right of way, to greet other road users, or to signal your annoyance. So the correct option is the first one. If you want to alert others of your presence. SOSN is what should you do if you're being followed by an ambulance showing flashing blue lights? Options are pull over as soon as it is safe to do so, accelerate hard to get away from it, maintain your speed and course, or brake harshly and stop well out into the road. So the correct option is the first one. You should pull over as soon as it is safe to do so. SOSN is you're driving behind a bus. What should you do if it pulls up at a bus stop? Options are accelerate past the bus, look for pedestrians, sound your horn, or pull in closely behind the bus. So the correct option is the second one. You should look for pedestrians. Next question is which style of driving causes increased risk to everyone? Options are considerate, defensive, competitive, or responsible. So the correct option is the third one, competitive driving. Next question is what hazard should you be specially aware of if you're turning left into a side road? Options are one-way street, pedestrians, traffic congestion, or parked vehicles. So the correct option is the second one. You should be aware of pedestrians walking on that street. Next question is, what does this sign mean? Options are minimum speed 30 miles per hour, end of maximum speed, end of minimum speed, or maximum speed 30 miles per hour. So the correct option is the third one. This sign shows that the minimum speed limit of 30 miles per hour ends here. 
Next question is, in order to supervise a learner driver, you need to have held a full driving license for the same category of vehicle for at least three years. What other requirement you must meet? Options are to have a car with dual controls, to be at least 21 years old, to be an approved driving instructor, or to hold an advanced driving certificate. So the correct option is the second one. You should also be at least 21 years old. Next question is, how far are you allowed to reverse? Options are no further than is necessary, no more than a car's length, as far as it takes to reverse around a corner or the length of a residential street. So the correct option is the first one, no more than what is necessary. Next question is, the fluid level in your battery is low. What fluid should you use to top it up? Options are battery acid, distilled water, engine oil or engine coolant. So the correct option is the second one, you should use distilled water. Next question is, why should you slow down as you approach this hazard? Options are because of the level crossing, because it's hard to see to the right, because of approaching traffic, or because of animal crossing. So the correct option is the first one, because of level crossing. Next question is, you are on a smart motorway, what does it mean when a mandatory speed limit is displayed above the hard shoulder? Options are you shouldn't travel in this lane, the hard shoulder can be used as a running lane, you can park on the hard shoulder if you feel tired, or you can pull up in this lane to answer a mobile phone. So the correct option is the second one. This means that hard shoulder can be used as a running lane. Next question is, you're driving in freezing conditions. What should you do as you approach a sharp bend? Options are coast into the bend, apply your parking brake, firmly use your foot brake, or slow down gently. So the correct option is the last one. You should slow down gently. Next question is, what's the speed limit for a car towing a trailer on a motorway? Options are 40 miles per hour, 50, 60, or 70. So the correct option is the third one. It is 60 miles per hour. Next question is, what should you do before driving into a tunnel? Options are switch off your radio, take off your sunglasses, close your sunroof, or switch on your windscreen wiper. So the correct option is the second one. You should take off your sunglasses. Next question is, how can you reduce the damage your vehicle causes to the environment? Options are use narrow side streets, brake heavily, use busy routes, or anticipate well ahead. So the correct option is the last one. You should anticipate well ahead. Next question is, what would suggest you driving on an icy road? Options are there is less wind noise, there is less tire noise, there is less transmission noise, or there is less engine noise. So the correct option is the second one. There will be less tire noise. Next question is, you want to reverse into a side road. What should you do if you aren't sure that the area behind your car is clear? Options are look through the rear window only, get out and check, check the mirrors only, or carry on assuming it's clear. So the correct option is the second one. You should get out and check. Next question is, what should you do when you move off from behind a park? Options are give a signal after moving off, look around before moving off, or look around after moving off, or use the exterior mirrors only. So the correct option is the second one, you should look around before moving off. Next question is, what must you do if your eyesight has become very poor and you're no longer able to meet the driver's eyesight requirements? Options are, tell the driver licensing authority, tell your doctor, tell the police, or tell your optician. So the correct option is the first one. You should tell the driver licensing authority. Next question is you're approaching traffic lights and the red light is showing. What signal will show next? So the correct option is the third one, amber alone. Next question is what should you do if you want to overtake a long, slow moving vehicle on a busy road? Options are follow it closely and keep moving out to see the road ahead. Flash your headlights for the oncoming traffic to give way. Stay behind until the driver waves you past or keep well back so that you can get a good view of the road ahead. So the correct option is the last one. You should keep well back so that you can get a good view of the road ahead. Next question is you're driving in traffic at the speed limit of the road. What should you do if the driver behind is trying to overtake? Options are move closer to the car ahead so the driver behind has no room to overtake. Wave the driver behind to overtake when it's safe. Keep a steady course and allow the driver behind to overtake. Or accelerate to get away from the driver behind. So the correct option is the third one. You should keep a steady course and allow him to overtake. Next question is you're driving past a line of parked cars. What should you do if a ball bounces out into the road ahead? Options are continue driving at the same speed and sound your horn. Continue driving at the same speed and flash your headlights. Slow down and be prepared to stop for children. Or stop and wave the children across to fetch their ball. So the correct option is the third one. You should slow down and be prepared to stop for children. As soon as traffic officers operate on motorways and some primary routes in England and Wales, what are they authorized to do? Options are stop and arrest drivers who break the law, repair broken down vehicles on the motorway, 
stop and direct anyone on a motorway or stop and weave the children across to fetch their ball. So the correct option is the third one. They have the authority to stop and direct anyone on a motorway. Next question is, what should you do if you start to feel drowsy while you are driving on a motorway? Options are stop on the hard shoulder for a sleep, open a window and stop as soon as it's safe and legal, speed up to arrive to your destination sooner, or slow down and let other drivers overtake. So the correct option is the second one, you should open a window and stop as soon as it is safe and legal to do so. Next question is, you want to turn right from a junction, what should you do if your view is restricted by parked vehicles? Options are move out quickly but be prepared to stop, sound your horn and pull out if there is no reply, stop then move forward slowly until you have a clear view or stop, get out and look along the main road to check. So the correct option is the third one, in this case you should stop then move forward slowly until you have a clear view of the road. Next question is, after your collision someone is unconscious in the vehicle, when should you call the emergency services? Options are only as a last resort, as soon as possible after you've woken them up or after checking for broken board. So the correct option is the second one, as soon as possible. Next question is, you wish to tow a trailer, where would you find the maximum nose weight for your vehicle's tow hitch? Options are in the vehicle handbook, in the highway code, in your vehicle registration certificate or in your license documents. So the correct option is the first one, in your vehicle handbook. Next question is, what does this sign mean? Options are turn left ahead, T-junction, no through road or give way. So the correct option is the second one. It warns you of a T-junction. Next question is, how can drinking alcohol affect your ability to drive? Options are your ability to judge speed will be reduced, your confidence will be reduced, your reactions will be faster or your awareness of danger will be improved. So the correct option is the first one. Your ability to judge speed will be reduced. Next question is you're turning right at a crossroad. An oncoming driver is also turning right. What's the advantage of turning behind the oncoming vehicle? Options are you'll have a clear view of any approaching traffic. You'll use less fuel because you can stay in higher gear. You'll have more time to turn or you'll be able to turn without stopping. So the correct option is the first one. You'll have a clearer view of any approaching traffic. Next question is you're following a large vehicle. Why should you stay at a safe distance behind it? Options are you'll be able to corner more quickly, you'll help the large vehicle to stop more easily, you'll give the driver a chance to see you in the mirrors, or you'll keep out of the wind better. So the correct option is the third one. This way you'll give the driver a chance to see you in their mirrors. The next question is what must you do when you see this sign? Options are stop only if traffic is approaching, stop even if the road is clear, stop only if children are waiting to cross, or stop only if a red light is showing. So the correct option is the second one, you should stop even if the road ahead is clear. Next question is, why should you switch off your rear fog lights when the fog has cleared? Options are to allow your headlights to work, to stop draining the battery, to stop the engine losing power, or to prevent dazzling drivers behind. So the correct option is the last one, you should turn it off to prevent dazzling the drivers behind you. Next question is, which type of vehicle should you be ready to give way to as you approach this bridge? Options are bicycles, buses, motorcycles, or cars. So the correct option is the second one, buses. Next question is, you're driving on a road that has a cycle lane. What does it mean if the lane is marked by a broken white line? Options are, you should not drive in the lane unless it's avoidable. There is a reduced speed limit for motor vehicles using the lane. Cyclists can travel in both directions in that lane or the lane must be used by motorcyclists in heavy traffic. So the correct option is the first one. You should not drive in the lane unless it's unavoidable. Next question is, how will your journey be affected by traveling outside the busy times of day? Options are your journey will use more fuel, your journey will take longer, your journey will be more hazardous, or your journey will have fewer delays. So the correct option is the last one, your journey will have fewer delays. Next question is, you're traveling along a motorway, where will you find a crawler or climbing lane? Options are on a steep gradient, before a service area, before a junction, or along the hard shoulder. So the correct option is the first one, on a steep gradient. Next question is, what will be affected if the road surface becomes soft in very hot weather? Options are the suspension, the exhaust emissions, the fuel consumption, or the tire grip. The correct option is the last one, the tire grip. Next question is, what should you do if the left hand pavement is closed due to street wear? Options are, watch out for pedestrians walking in the road, use your right hand mirror more often, speed up to get past the roadworks more quickly, or position close to the left hand curb.
So the correct option is the first one. In this case, you should watch out for pedestrians that are walking in the road. Now that's it for this video. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.